How's it going guys? It's Murderface and today I'm going to show you how to render an image in Photoshop CS3 Extended. For those of you that don't know, rendering an image is basically removing the background, any other kind of pixels from the character, object, whatever it is itself. That way when you use this picture of say Rykov, which is going to be what I use for my example, none of the background shows up on it. You won't have to do any blending anything to it. It'll be ready to use. Now, first step you want to do is go ahead and zoom in on your image because the closer you are the more accurate your line is going to be for masking this off because that's all we're doing is masking off the background and then we're going to turn up this background to where it's not visible and save it that way. Go ahead and go in and I'm going to grab my pen tool here, make sure it's set on paths, and draw our first dot. Now essentially what you're doing is you're going to make a series of dots. And Photoshop is going to play its own little game of connect the dots essentially. Whatever dots you draw, it's going to draw a st straight line right in between them. So let's go ahead and start. as you can see when you zoom up there is kind of a blur to images that's actually a good thing because it gives you some room to work with you can go by the very edge of the blur it'll look right you can go a little bit towards the inside edge of the blur and you still won't have much to worry about messed up a little there As you can see, we're getting on his hair, and that's going to be one of the harder parts to do. What I do in this case is go ahead and zoom out. The shortcut for that is Control minus if you didn't know. And I'm going to go using this angle because when you look at it zoomed up, his hair is such a close color to the actual background that it would be very hard to actually pick out by pixels which part is his hair and which part is the background. By zooming out you're going by what your eye sees. And now that we're getting close to the end of the hair, I'm going to zoom back in. I'm going to go ahead and finish up his hair. As you can see here, now we're on his face. His face is a pretty it's a pretty straight diagonal line. So you can actually start spreading them out more. The straighter line, the less dots you'll need. But in this case, where you'd be on his chin, you would want to make more dots. More dots means it's going to be snapping to the shape a lot more than it normally would. And just so you guys know, this is kind of a quick rendering. Normally I take more time, but seeing how YouTube only allows 10 minutes for video, I gotta make sure that I cut it right under the limit. This is actually my second shot of doing this. The first video was about 15 minutes, and I really didn't feel like making a split tutorial. Alright, now you see that we're at the bottom of where our stock image is. What we would do, because if you look up here, there's still another piece I need to take out. So what I'm going to do is go over here. I'm going to go into the corner as much as I can and click there. That way, and I don't know if you can see it because of the resolution or not, but it just drew a line straight from where I was to over here. So it is going to cut a little bit out, but not much. And I'm going to go up. And right here is where I need to remove. So I'm going to go ahead and click at the very edge. And essentially what you're trying to do is, is you're making a custom shape. It's got to be closed up. But once you've finished your shape up here, you can actually mask off the rest. And it'll take everything that's inside these dots and make a new image out of it. Alright, so now that you're there, go back find our first dot 
and click it. And as you see, it just closed it up. I'm going to zoom out. And that's actually a pretty decent render considering how fast I did it. If you want to do a really good job on it, take more time, use more dots. But like I said, video's got to be short, so I got to do this fast. Alright, now if you look, right here, there is a lock on the layer that we are using. That means, from what I just did, I cannot edit anything. So what I want to do is, is I want to make sure I have that layer selected, click Layer, Duplicate Layer, and you don't have to take time to actually name it. You can if you want, but it's not necessary. And as you can see, this new layer is does not have the lock on it and is completely identical to what you just made. Now that you have your now editable layer, you want to go in Layer, Vector Mask, and Current Path. As you can see, it split it down here. You can still see the background right now, but the only reason you can see the background is because our other locked layer is still visible. So we want to go ahead and click this eye symbol right here and turn off the visibility for it. And now you can see he's actually separated from the background. But we still have the problem of these lines showing up. So what we would do is go layer, sorry, layer, rasterize, vector mask. And that took all the lines off and if you can actually see it did a pretty good job rendering considering the amount of time it took. His hair's a little cartoonish there, but considering the whole series is animated, I, it's actually pretty good considering how fast we did it. Alright, so now what we want to do, now that we've got that, is we want to go ahead and save. And you would click save, and Make sure you save it as a PSD just in case you need to edit it later. It makes things a lot easier. And I had already done this, by the way, so that's the only reason I had to overwrite. And now what I'm going to do is make a copy so I can share it online. Now the best format for you to save it in would be a .png file. That means it will keep this transparency here intact. It doesn't require it to actually be a square, anything like that. It's pretty good. As you can see, I already had it saved, so I'm just going to overwrite what that is. Okay. And for PNG options, hit none. Otherwise, you're going to get all these lines and stuff all over your picture. It's going to distort it. All right. Now, what I would want to do if I wanted to use it in a new image, I'm going to go ahead and close this, I'm going to open up, and I'm going to open up our new .png file that we just made. Now I'm going to open up a new file, which is basically the destination where I would want the render to go. And that's actually a little too big. I'm going to go with 700 by... We'll say 150 for now. Alright. And I'm going to adjust the window size here so I can actually see. Now you want to select this window, grab your move tool, drag it, and paste it. And as you can see, it's just him. No background there whatsoever. So I'm actually free to go ahead, pick, you know, rain mount, or we're just going to use one. Paint bucket it and it actually came out looking pretty smooth. So I hope you guys enjoyed my tutorial. That's all I have to say for now. You know, leave me a message if you liked what I did. Get enough comments, I might make some more, but I'm done for now.